Welcome to this Saturday Travel and History Tip, and this is our Control Tower visit. A few months back, a friend of ours who is a pilot said, Hey guys, I know you like to do all kinds of fun things. I heard that the control towers are allowing tours again. Well, we investigated that and tried to get into George Bush International Airport in Houston and Hobby, but we're having difficulty contacting the right person. I did come across a young lady who sent me to another young lady at Ellington Airport, and that was our ticket to the tower. After driving to the airport grounds, we headed towards the control tower and to the intercom to contact them to let them know we were there. I have to tell you, we did make arrangements for the tour first. You have to do that. And if you are going to be visiting the Houston area or you live in the Houston area and are interested in touring Ellington Airport's control tower, contact me and I will give you the contact information so you can set up a tour of your own for your family or your school. The gate opened and we we parked and entered the secure facility. We called them again and the doors unlocked. The new tower at Ellington Airport was built for safety, operational success, and growth as a modern, fully equipped tower for aviation and space flight operations. The tower was built to support leading edge technology and a robust infrastructure, and it is a beautiful facility. Most of the traffic there at that airport is military of some sort or related to NASA and corporate. We took the elevator and then walked a flight of stairs up into the control tower area. It was a bright sunny day and the shades were down and it was a very, um, I would say, relaxed environment. It was great for that kind of thing. There were three employees. One was local control who was responsible for approach, departure, and tower. There was one in charge of ground control and our tour guide was in charge of flight data that day. I don't know what you think of when you think of a control tower, but I think of all the old radar screens with the planes blipping along, but this was a beautiful high-tech facility. They said, you guys just missed the five F-18s landing. Well, we didn't have to wait long and four more joined them. So that was exciting to see. And one was being towed over to the Lone Star Flight Museum, which we have been to the Lone Star Flight Museum. And it is a great place to tour. And maybe on a Saturday Travel and History Tip, I'll take you over there. But it's only a few blocks away from Ellington Control Tower. I noticed that there was uh, like a wall outside and some lights or security cameras. And I asked our guide, boy, it'd be nice if you were able to go outside every once in a while. And she said, there is a catwalk out there. Would y'all like to go? And we said, of course. I wanted to try to catch some better pictures, not through the screen. So dipping way down and through a very short doorway passage, we made our way outside and it was exceedingly windy that day. But according to this computer screen, the bird status was low. And speaking of bird status, we asked each one of them what was the most exciting thing they had ever experienced as an air traffic controller. And one gentleman said that he was working at a different airport and he had cleared a Learjet to land and he's walking watching this Learjet land, but it's speeding along the runway. They're going very fast and they're not stopping. And the plane went through the fence at the end of the runway and sunk into the muddy grass. Fortunately, it had rained a whole lot and the mud was able to stop the plane from going out onto a roadway. It was a mechanical failure. The other two, the most exciting things that they had experienced as air traffic controllers were basically the same thing, but two different incidents. Military jet had sucked in a bird into their engines and both of them, the pilots, had to eject while the plane was near the ground and one of them was on the ground. And I thought, how does a pilot eject from a plane that's on the ground? But they had to because the plane was on fire. One of them was actually a NASA plane. The control tower agent was saying, your engine is on fire. Your engine is on fire because they didn't seem to be reacting as they should. That was really an exciting thing to hear their stories. And they said, we've got so many stories. And of course, pilots, and I'm sure they have jillions of stories too. I noticed that they kept passing strips of paper among themselves. And I asked our guide, what are those strips of paper? And she said, those are the IFR flight 
plans, and that's for instrument flight. And that way they know once a pilot has filed his flight plan, they know what his intentions are. She said some VFR pilots do file flight plans plans if they were wanting to have flight following. Along with seeing the F-18s, we also saw a fleet of Blackhawks and a fleet of Coast Guard Sikorsky MH-65A Dolphins. These are search and rescue helicopters, and they were doing some practicing around the field, which made our time there even more exciting. I tried to capture some 360-degree views as we walked along outside along the catwalk. This is all a part of American history. Learn it. Love it. Appreciate it. Don't let them steal our history. Teach children our American history. And next week, we'll take you to the Salt Palace in Grand Saline, Texas. It's just salt. Hope you watch the Saturday Travel and History Tips. If you order all three of my books, you get one free plus free shipping. That's only $36 for three books on the lower 48 with lots of fun places to explore and learn about. Call or text to order. And don't forget to go to my website, danasbooks.net to review previous Saturday travel and history tips and look up some fun recipes you'll have to try as a family. Thank you.